So, why don't you tell me a little about yourself? Hey, this is Jack Kelly with the Recruiter Podcast. Today, I want to talk about uh, simple que- a simple question that's asked in the interview that really gives people trouble. And what I'm doing with these podcasts is make them short, to the point, to help you with your career, with interviewing, to help if you're an HR person, a hiring manager, a job seeker, passive or, or active, just to get a sense of how everything works. So today, within two minutes, I'm going to give you the simple answer, how to answer this question. So the, well, so Jack, tell me about yourself. That's such an annoying question. It's always asked. And, you know, it's one of those things that you have to be prepared to answer. And it kind of freaks people out because they don't know what to do. So, you know, when they ask the question, hey, tell me about yourself. The knee-jerk reaction is, well, I was born in Canarsie, Brooklyn, and I went to PS 115, and then um, on to Building C uh, uh, Middle School. I think they called it junior high school at the time. And then uh, I, uh, my hobbies are uh, walking on the beach. You know, you don't do that. So that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. Most people feel, when they say, tell me about yourself, that they're looking for, you know, oh, I want to know you, Jack. I want to know all about you. Please tell me your deep, dark secrets. Tell me all about yourself, your hopes, your dreams, your fears, your worries. And, and then they'll gush out, you know, all this personal stuff. And meanwhile, the interviewer, the hiring manager, the HR person is, oh, my God, I do not care about any of this. This doesn't matter to me at all. It's boring. Here's what they really want. They really want to know when they ask, tell me about yourself, is how are you good for this job? Why are you good for this job? And sell me, sell me on why you're good for it. So let's say I was going for another recruiting job and they asked me, hey, Jack, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Of course. Mr. and Mrs. Interviewer, I will be glad to. So I'm not going to start with, you know, where I grew up and all that. I'm going to go right into, um, I've been an re- executive recruiter for the last 20 plus years. I've placed uh, about three, four, five thousand mid to senior level uh, professionals with a wide array of the nation's top tier investment banks, hedge funds, private equity, private banks, and other financial institutions. They focus on mid to senior level executives. Um, and we, uh, in particular, We focus on compliance, legal risk, audit, anti-money laundering, regulatory related matters. And I uh, understand from this role that you're looking for somebody who has the compliance experience, uh, recruiting, and also I neglected to manage, uh, mention that I manage people. So in addition to the recruiting, I manage a whole team of people. And I understand from what you're looking for, someone to come in there and recruit for compliance, legal, risk people, and someone who can manage a team. So I think with my background, it fits perfectly what you're doing. Boom! You know, I stumbled there a few times, but that's okay. That's natural. You know, sometimes people feel when they interview, they have to have everything perfect. You know, they have to be flawless. Um, I subscribe to the theory that, you know what, you want to be yourself because it comes across more genuine, it comes off more real, it doesn't you know, come across too rehearsed. So if you stumble, if you um, if you do, don't worry about it. You know, it's really the substance of what you know, you're talking about, what you bring to the table. So you can see from what I said, you know, you know, if they ask me a question, I'm not going into all the extraneous detail. I'm not going into tangents. I'm not going into personal matters. You know, I'm going into here's who I am, here's what I've done, and then why that would help them because it fits exactly the job. Really, it's that simple. You know, people try to make these things complicated. I guess, you know, in everything in life, think about it. Everything, we try to overcomplicate things. We drive ourselves crazy. But oftentimes, the simplest thing is the answer. Simplest thing is, hey, here's what I do. This is who I am in a career perspective. And these are my skills. List them one, two, three, four. You know, maybe if there's a couple of prior skills you have and experiences that make sense, add that too. Now, what happens next is you pique their curiosity because they're saying, wow, this person is exactly what we're looking for. Then it gets a little bit more organic. So they might ask questions. Hey, what type of companies did you deal with? What type of compliance? How many have you, you know, uh, uh, placed? At what levels? What salary? Do you do the sourcing and the recruiting? Do you just do the recruiting? Do you deal with the candidates? You know, and then you have that back and forth 
where it just flows organically because now they could dive into it because we, what, what I did is I framed, I framed what I do and then I sold them on you know, what I could do over there. Now, I was a little soft selling here because you know, I'm just doing this podcast. It's literally 7.30 in the morning, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get these podcasts done in the morning before everyone comes in and it's noisy. Uh, so I, I probably could have sold it a little harder but then, you know what, when you're in that interview situation, just like here, and you're on the spot, you got to do it, sometimes you don't hit it exactly what you want, and that's okay. You know, when you walk out of an interview, you're always going to kick yourself, could have, should have, would have. It's human nature. You know, you know I'm going to get off this podcast and say, Ugh, should I do it again because I could have sold myself more? You're always going to have that feeling, and don't worry about it. Because if the company is interested in you, they're going to come back, and they're going to want to do some more, you know, interviews. So you have a chance to kind of keep improving. So... Because it was so easy. Well, let me give you a bonus one. Let's add it. You ready? You, you have time, guys? Let's see. Yeah, you guys have time. Where are you going? So um, let's give another one. How about, um, let's see. Do you have any questions for me? How's that, right? Is that an annoying question or not? Do you have any questions for me? That question annoys the hell of a lot of candidates and here's why they obsess over that question so much that they can't focus on the interview during the interview all they can think about is what questions should I ask what questions should I ask what questions should I ask I don't know any questions I ask what questions should I ask so they're not in the moment with the interview they're not in the moment with the interview what I mean by that is when you're in the interview you have to be in the moment you have to listen to the interviewer. You have to look in their eyes. You have to see their body movements. You have to kind of judge the tone of their voice. You don't want to be distracted by your monkey brain saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what question do I ask, what question do I ask, what question do I ask? Because then you can't, you can't focus. So here's the simple answer, real simple. You want to make it organic. So as you're having a back and forth, if there's a question, that you have, ask, ask it, you know? Just like you would, what would you do if you're having a conversation with a friend or, you know, just someone, you know, a stranger you meet on the street or are sitting next to on the commute in or home from work? You know, oh, hey, that's a good point. So what do you do there? Huh. And do you do this where you work? Hmm, that's really interesting. How about such and such? It's organic. It's natural. And then people like me ask questions because it shows that you're listening and you care. So I would suggest... You, you organically ask these questions as they come up. You don't have to force it. If you really don't have a question, you don't have a question. But most times if you're interviewing, you're going to be curious. You know, they're going to ask you questions. And then based on the back and forth, you know, you're going to have some questions of them. And hiring managers and HR people and interviewers appreciate it. Because when you ask questions, it shows you're interested. And you make it organic. So then there's a back and forth and back and forth. And actually, it helps out the you know, the people are interviewing because some, a lot of these people aren't trained. They don't know how to interview. They're going by cliches. You know, all right, I'm supposed to ask these questions because that's what I'm supposed to do, so I'm going to do it. So if you're asking questions, it shows you're interested and it makes their life easier. So you ask those questions. Then when it gets time to that dreaded, oh, do you have any questions for me, which more often than not happens, you could say, hey, thank you so much. You've been very kind. I've asked a number of questions, and you've been very thoughtful and responsive and offered a lot of color to my questions, and I really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you. So I, I think you, we've covered a lot, and I feel very comfortable about the role, and I think my background, my experience lends itself to this position, and if you're interested, I am definitely interested in pursuing this and moving forward. Boom. How do you like that? How do you like that? So you don't have to stress about having another question. You reiterate that you had asked questions and they answered it, but then, you catch what I did? You then sell yourself again. You're selling yourself on the roll, and then you let them know, hey, I'm interested. Because then they walk out, oh, this guy's interested, he's inquisitive, he asks questions, we like him, let's bring him back. If you play that hard to get, is he interested, is she not interested, I don't know, huh? It's just a subtle thing to do. It goes back to when you're in middle school and you like a girl or boy and you ask your friend to follow, see, hey, do they like me back? And if so, that's cool. If not, all right, you know. And if they like you back, you're more apt to say, 
hey, can you go to the movies with me? You know, and, and you won't feel you could get rejected. Same thing. We don't ever grow up. It's all the same. So a hiring manager, HR person, they don't want to get rejected. So if they know you're interested, they're going to be interested in you back because they're going to feel when it moves forward and they go up the chain of command and they give an offer, this person is going to accept it because they're interested. No one wants to go that whole chain of bureaucratic command only to have a person reject the offer and the hiring manager and the HR person and the interviews all feel foolish because they made an offer and it's rejected. So here's another thing you can do too. You know, last bonus point. L last uh, thing you do too is sum it all up so that you ask the questions organically and they say you have any questions, you say the same thing, hey, thank you very much, you gave, you know, I answered all your questions, blah, 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 blah. but then you say, you could, what you could do is then you could sum up your questions. Well, it's really interesting because I was curious about X and you, you mentioned that it's blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I had that question about Y and then you said this. And so you're restating your questions, restating their answers to make sure you're at the same time. Because have you ever had a situation where you, someone says something, and you're like, okay, and then you say, okay, so you said X, and they go, no, I didn't. What do you mean? It's a weird thing, but it happens. So this way you're stating it, and maybe you were mistaken in their answer, or maybe on the same page. So it's a good way to, to round it out, especially if these are issues you're concerned about. You know? If, if let's say your question was, oh, so I understand you have wor work from remote. Oh, yes we have work from remote. Then later on you sum it up. I'm really glad I asked about work from remote because I want to work from remote, remotely. And then they say, well, wait, when I say remotely, it's only one day a week. Well, think about it. That makes all the difference in the world. If you're thinking it was five days and they're thinking one, wow, I'm glad I clarified it. So another trick is to do that summing up, going over the questions you asked their answers to make sure you're all on the same page. So how's that? So we got two questions. So tell me about yourself and how do I deal with the, uh, do you have any questions for me question? Right? Pretty good. So I hope this helps. Jack Kelly, Recruiter Podcast. Have a great day and I'll come back to you tomorrow. Bye.